find the program started, then I can. I know this has been an amazing reunion for current students, alumni, faculty, and friends. There'll be plenty of time for you to catch up and network. Um, my name is Anita Plummer. I'm an associate professor in the Department of African Studies. And I am a part of the amazing committee that pulled together this momentous occasion, which is the 70th anniversary of the Department of African Studies, or African Studies at Howard, because we weren't initially a department 70 years ago. So if you have not done so already, please scan the QR code. There are handbills, and um, there are some posters in the back for the digital program. We also have physical copies of the program in the back also. So in the digital program, you can read about the history of the department, you can read the bios of all of the presenters, um, you can read about the inaugural uh, Frazier Cansbury lecture. Um, so please check out that digital bio. We're trying to go green and not you know, send you home with 30 or 40 pages of documents that will just collect dust. So, we're going to begin our program uh, with the chair of our department, Dr. Mohamed Kamara, who will give us opening remarks and the occasion. Oh, does everyone know where the bathroom is? I'm so sorry. So, if you need to use the bathroom, um, just head out of these double doors, keep straight. You'll see a little um, passageway and you'll dead end into the bathroom. All right. So, thank you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much, <clears throat> Dr. Kramer. Uh, please forgive me, somehow my voice is uh, bearing on me, but I'll make my, I'll do my best to, uh, to keep it. Well, good morning. good morning. And thank you very much for coming to the celebration of the 70th anniversary of African Studies at Howard University. And as uh, Dr. Plummer hinted it, uh, African Studies was not created in 1953 as an academic department. It was created as a uh, African Studies doctoral study, uh, doctoral research program. And it evolved and uh, included later the master's uh, program and later the undergraduate program and then became the full-fledged academic department as we know it today. However, in the Department of African Studies as we are today, we are proud to take that 70-year heritage as an exemplification of what Howard University, one of the top HBCUs in this country, has contributed to not only the liberation of the African diaspora in this country, by making Africa a legitimate and genuine field of study, learning, and research. Because when this program was created 70 years ago, there were only two fully and truly independent and sovereign countries on the African continent, Ethiopia and Liberia. Which means that any and all forms of African studies or studies geared towards Africa that happened on the continent and in the colonial powers was geared towards demonstrating, justifying, and legitimizing the colonial perception of Africa as the dark continent without culture, without history, and without civilization. And as the French called it, Mission Civilisatrice, the civilizing mission, it was to tell us, not only in Africa, but the African diaspora worldwide, that we don't have a history. We don't have culture. We don't have the civilization, and they came to civilize us. It's in the midst of that that Howard University, 
took upon itself to create this program here. And to say, no, we Africans and descendants of Africa, we are going to own our cultures, our history, our civilization, to learn it, to teach it, to research it, to create knowledge, to discover knowledge, and to implement that knowledge not only in the classroom, the library, the laboratory, and the conferences, but also on the ground, where Pan-Africanism was developing in this hemisphere, in North, um, North America, the Caribbean, Latin America, and, and all that. Not only to cultivate that powerful movement, geared towards liberating all and any people of African descent from all and any forms of domination, discrimination, and exploitation based on race and color. That Pan-African movement was caught by Africans who were studying at that time in this hemisphere and in the colonial powers, France, Britain, Portugal, Spain, you name it, and the interconnection among them helped them bring the global pan-Africanism, intercontinental pan-Africanism to Africa to further fuel the national liberation movements that were going on in Africa. And that helped reconnect systematically Africa and its diaspora. So because of the strength of our solidarity, African Americans who were still under different forms of discrimination in this country, in this hemisphere, supported Africa's struggles for liberation in Africa. And that sent a message around the world. Africa is not a dark continent. And black people are not without history, without culture, without civilization. And that black people are people, like all peoples. And our world can only stand and succeed if we treat each other with all the respect. And in the 50s and 60s, Africa that was becoming independent particularly during the 60s, which the United Nations officially proclaimed the African decade, because most African countries gained independence during that decade. Africa supported the struggle, the uh, civil rights movement here in the United States, that reinforced it our solidarity and the Department of African Studies at the Howard University in Washington, D.C. continued to play its role <coughs> to inspire, educate, train, guide, support the hundreds and hundreds of students from Africa, from the Caribbean, from America and elsewhere in that movement. So to us, the study of Africa is not restrained in the ivory towers of academy. Call it activism, call it whatever you want. We have to continue the struggle. And that's why Howard University in general and the Department of African Studies, because it had become a department by then, we are also very instrumental in solidarity with all the HBCUs to put a great deal of pressure in apartheid South Africa to fight and defeat apartheid and to see to it the liberation of Nelson Mandela and the election of Nelson Mandela as the first president of the truly free and sovereign South Africa.
And recently, that same solidarity came about instinctively with the global support coming from Africa and other places to support our brothers and sisters in the African-American community to move forward the Black Lives Matter movement. So I would say, Herman, that while we celebrate the 70th anniversary of African Studies at Howard University, let's keep in mind two things. One, the true freedom and strategic independence of Africa as a continent and as a world and a piece of the global world. In that struggle for Africa to cease being what is called today the weakest link in the global political economy, we, the African diaspora, have a major role to play in that. Because we are in an environment or environments that our brothers and sisters on the continent cannot afford. All the time. So we should fight for that. So we are a major force to free Africa from all forms of domination, exploitation, the asymmetrical globalization, and the exploitative international relations that Africa has going through, and that the African youth is rejecting be they civilians, business people, academics, and also the media. That's one. Two, until Africa reaches that level of global independence, sovereignty, respectability, the freedom, dignity, and well-being of every single member of the global Africa community, we of the diaspora, those virtues will be highly vulnerable to the global rising of Afrophobia that we are experiencing today. <clears throat> None of us would take freedom, dignity, and respectability for granted until Africa gets there because we will always be seen as black, not in the natural or societal way, but in the equation of top and down. Please join us in the Department of African Studies at Howard University to make the 21st century the century of Africa. Because whether we like it or not, whether we are aware of it or not, Africa is the new frontier. From India to China to France to everywhere, to Russia, they say Africa is the future. The question is, the future for whom? Is it going to be our future? We Africans and the African diaspora, Afro-descendants, the global Africa community, or is Africa going to be the future of somebody else while we are still struggling? Let's not that happen. So it is in that general context that I would like us to celebrate the 70th anniversary of African studies at one of the most prestigious most respectable and most respected HBCUs, Howard University. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamara, for setting the mood and putting us on a mission, a very clear mission, in terms of um, the value of the history of our department, our present, and the future that we're going to forge collectively. 
I now have the honor of introducing to you Dr. Paul Tiambe Zaleza. He is the Senior Advisor for Strategic Initiatives here at Howard University to give remarks from the administration. to the indefatigable 
commitment uh, that Bob uh, showed in not only promoting African <coughs> studies at Howard, but also in promoting African studies around the country and ensuring uh, that we influence the policy again in this country. So, uh, in homage to Bob, uh, I'm here. Uh, the second personal connection is that my dear wife uh, did her master's degree right here in the department, in the department uh, of African Studies. And, uh, I won't tell you how, how many years ago, uh, because you, you might age her and you turn and age me, uh, and she would forgive me for that. Uh, but uh, she always used to tell me about her experiences uh, here. So, you know, Professor Suleiman Young, uh, Professor Mai Cham. So I knew these people before I actually met them. Uh, and, and of course, uh, through her, you know, um, high, high regard uh, for, you know, the faculty that she, she met here, uh, I began to obviously become more and more interested in the wake of, of, of our professors, but also in reading about her, uh, about his history and his contributions uh, to the development of African studies. Again, as you all know, uh, Howard has produced the who is who uh, of African studies, uh, of African studies, of African American studies, uh, from people like uh, William Leo Hansberry down the line. And uh, of course, I'll uh, have a chance to pay tribute uh, to those individuals later. Uh, finally, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here in, in, because I'm a new member of this university, uh, which I'm extremely proud to be, and feel grateful and humbled uh, that uh, I've joined this uh, you know, esteemed institution. And as part of that, I'm exceptionally happy that I've been a member of the Department of Education.